An update for you tonight on a story that the I team has followed very closely. CBS News Texas partnering with our affiliates all across this country, digging into what appears to be a nationwide issue at our schools. It's the way they treated her like she was not a human. The I team has shown you teachers and law enforcement officers, in many cases, restraining, handcuffing, and arresting very young children right in front of their peers. Tonight, investigator Ginger Allen joining us with an update on what has happened since our last report. What's going on? So, Doug, restraining children in school in Texas is allowed. We have been in Austin where lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are working to change that. The I team has also obtained new data, which will likely show you this is happening more often than you may think and to our most vulnerable. And that's what you are about to see. So I do need to warn you, in case you have children in the room, some of this video could be disturbing. Come over here. Where are those for? This little girl is simply sitting and listening to an adult reading to her. That's for you. She has no idea what is about to happen. So And this is one of many examples of body cam videos CBS stations across the country obtained. Put your hands behind your back. Young students who do not appear to be posing threats to themselves or others restrained and often arrested at school. Please, please, please. No. Children like 10 year olds Isaac and Isaiah. How many times were they restrained? I can't even put a number on it. More than 50. We first introduced you to Heather Alex in November. She says her twins have been restrained at school without her permission repeatedly since age four. Held down, unable to move, holding their feet, holding their body over the floor. The twin school district could not comment. In Texas, the I team found many of the legal battles regarding restraints and arrest involve children with disabilities. And now, new data we've obtained reinforces those findings. According to a CBS analysis, the I-team has learned in a three-year period, school personnel or police restrained Texas children with disabilities at least 83,416 times. 44% were diagnosed with some type of, quote, emotional disturbance, a learning disability. 22% had autism. 107 had an orthopedic impairment, a physical disability. Among all of these children, 16-year-old Leah. When she was in middle school, Leah started to come home with unexplained bruises, scratch marks, and bite marks. Four-year-old Damien. My son went from being a happy little boy to having constant nightmares at the sight of a chair that uses a belt, such as a high chair or a car seat. And eighth grader Quinton. He was violently and intentionally thrown into a brick wall into a seclusion room. Three months after our investigation, these parents gathered here at the state capitol to support at least six new bills regarding restraints, including no kids in cuffs. Democratic Senator Royce West and Republican Representative Lacey Hull are pushing a House and Senate bill to prohibit the physical restraint of students by peace officers and school security under certain circumstances. I need them to step up and protect students like Leah. I need everyone to be her voice. <laughs> Sorry. Gina Tenbrick says months after restraints, a teacher finally told her what was happening to her daughter, and then she had to fight to see the classroom video. I watched them put my daughter down on the ground, face down, um, two grown women holding her arms behind her back. Um, she was struggling. I saw her legs, her feet kind of lift up off the ground like she was struggling to breathe. Thelma Lira says her three-year-old Damien and his friends, Isabella and Ryan, could not communicate what was happening to them. The alarming part of it was that um, the restraints were not used in all of the children in the classroom. It was only used on the children that could not speak. If I would have done those things to Leah, she would have been taken from me. We need to make sure that any use of force is limited to the, the emergency to keep a student safe, not these actions that we've been hearing about. These advocacy groups are now asking Texas legislators for more, more bills, 
to stop what they call blanket immunity for accused educators, put the accused on do not hire registries, provide schools more funding to maintain classroom cameras, and to give parents more access to that footage. And more than 1,300 miles away, more legislation is in the works. We want to see mandated reporting. The executive director of the Texas-based Minaret Foundation, who we met in our first story, recently joined us from the nation's capital with Houston Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia. They are drafting a federal bill which would require all schools nationwide to report arrest and restraints of all students. The Texas Education Agency only mandates restraint reporting for children with special needs in Texas. Some states do not require any reporting at all. So it would require reporting. It would help study on the impact uh, of the trauma, the emotional distress that a child goes through. Advocates and lawmakers have long made headlines arguing better reporting would prove better training is needed. And that would protect our teachers and our most vulnerable. Isaac, Isaiah, Quentin, Damien, Isabella, Ryan, and Leah. And Leah, there at the end. In the last five years, we have learned the Texas Education Agency has investigated 133 complaints involving restraints and or timeouts in schools. In 40% of those cases, the TEA found that the school district did not follow requirements. The other 60% included cases that had findings of no wrongdoing, self-correction before the investigation began, or the cases were simply withdrawn, and or in a few cases they are still pending. These are all complaints parents can file, and I have put a link about how to do that on our website at cbstexas.com. So you mentioned that there are lawmakers calling for mandated training to, or mandated reporting to prove the, the training is needed. Uh, so with the investigation, as you continue to unfold, you're looking into the training as well. It's right. almost kind of yeah. putting the cart before the horse the way they want it, but what are you seeing with that? Exactly. We have spent a lot of time at our local universities. In fact, Doug, I was just at TCU last week. They are talking about ways that they have alternatives to these uh, d alternatives to restraints and they are researching ways. We are asking about children who have difficulties and pose threats to themselves, others, and teachers. But we are also talking about children who are disabled, pose no threat to anyone at all. And that's a lot of what you saw in this video. And I will be back with that part of the conversation in just a few weeks. A follow up for sure. We'll look forward yeah. to seeing you then. Thank you. Ginger, thanks. Mm -hmm.